This is uh, uh, Jim Fung from uh, Ant Group. I will uh, present my colleague, Ken Yu, and uh, on this work. Um, from the title, you can see that the work is mostly focused on the divisor and uh, the op uh, performance optimization. We will do some um, ar architectural refactor to make the performance better. And uh, the LALO here is uh, work as a verb to minimize and speed up the divisor. So a, a little bit about the under group. It's the company behind the Anipay. So uh, our uh, object to optimize today is the container runtimes. Uh, mostly it's low level container runtime comparing with the like uh, container D, that is a high level container runtime. And uh, for lower layer container runtime, we split into several categories. First one you may familiar with is the container, Linux containers, uh, RunC, maybe the most uh, popular one. Uh, and there are some other kind writing in, in Rust or in C for different scenario. Uh, this, this container basically leverages the Linux kernels, C group, namespace, such, such technology to do the isolation. But in essence, they share the host kernel to do the to, to do the, uh, to, they cannot provide very clean isolation there. So uh, some people are thinking like virtual machine is a great way to do the isolation. So uh, there's a uh, wrong time named wrong, wrong way. And uh, wrong way is like uh, make the virtual machine like container. And after that, people are thinking that we need to make it a lot a little more like like the container. So a lot of micro virtual machine runtime coming out, Kata, Firecracker, Cloud Hypervisor, etc. And uh, and there are other kind of uh, container runtime which named sandboxing. Uh, the the typical one is Gvisor, and uh, another one Lambda, uh, which is open sourced by. IBM uh, is not very active now. And uh, there's another one called Container, which is uh, writing in Rust. And uh, different container runtime provide different, uh, different uh, features. So what, what is Gvisor? Gvisor actually consists of three things. First one, Cisco interception. We need to intercept all the syscalls from the application processes into this divisor guest kernel. And uh, there are three platforms to do that in the upstream divisor, like Petrace, KVM. And uh, this, year, this year, a new platform named SysTrap is upstream. And uh, after interception, Gvisor will do some emulation of the Linux ABI to implement, implement some of the syscalls to do to, to, uh, for the applications. And uh, they are mostly written in Golang. And uh, uh, then, at the last part, uh, Gvisor will limit the syscalls into the host kernel to, uh, for the security. So that is syscall restriction. Um, in the philosophy of the divisor, it will use the locking pop, like some popular path in, in the host kernel can be called from this, this path. So a little bit about the history of the divisor. In 2018, Google open sourced the divisor with the concentrate on the small footprint and the, uh, and the quick startup time. And then uh, Wang Xu uh, shared some comments on the divisor. Actually, he, he did a, a, a tech share on, on, a, on a quantitative comparison with Kata and the divisor. Um, they, have, uh, they have different advantage and disadvantages here. After that, some uh, paper from academic, academia uh, has shown that like this paper from Ethan uh, basically said that the performance of the divisor is, re is really bad. 
And uh, the, other, uh, the, the other paper here uh, basically says like the security of Firecracker and GVisor is, is not, not that satisfactory because the, uh, uh, according to their experiment, this container runtime can invoke much more uh, code execution in the host kernel. And uh, after that, a startup, startup company uh, open sourced the Cork container, which is very similar to GVisor, but they rewrite the guest kernel using the Rust. So they tr trying to make that, uh, uh, the, trying to substitute, substitute the uh, Golang language. And, uh, and we, we treat that as a more like the virtual machine because they has clear barrier between the guest kernel and the hypervisor. So they even have a mechanism named QCore to accelerate this, this uh, communication. So we, we treat that a little bit more like virtual machine. So at that year, some architecture refactor in GVisor, like VFS2, the Nisa FS, uh, is inside the, the, the GVisor. And in 2022, uh, FACO added the threat detection in the GVisor, so the security model is not only uh, to protect the container escape, but to but to uh, discover some uh, abnormals inside the container. And then uh, in the last year, Google Cloud Run actually introduced the second runtime besides the divisor. They originally used the divisor as the container runtime, but they, uh, they uh, uh, adopt another micro, micro virtual machine based container runtime. So this actually generates a lot of concerns from the community. Is GVisor still a workable way? So that is a question maybe most people want to uh, figure out. And after that, actually this year we see a lot of active development in the GVisor. Some nice optimization there, the TCP IP NAS stack, the direct FS, the system trap, the platform, and the root FS overlay. So feedback from both industry and academia actually are very pessimistic about this kind of uh, technology. And um, actually we, we, invent the, uh, we uh, invest in this direction for more than five years. So today we are going to talk a little, uh, a little bit about this, why we still uh, invest this. So, both sandbox and the micro virtual machine provide a stronger isolation comparing with the run C, the, the native container, but with the security tags. They have different pros and cons. For sandbox, they actually they have native resource elastic because they actually they are processed to the host kernel. Uh, everything uh, free, every free memory page are returned back to the host kernel immediately. So that make it, and uh, that also applies to the CPU. So this is very elastic. Another good thing for GVisor is it's easy to customize and the full stack optimization. Actually, GVisor has about uh, um, 160K line of code including all of the themes. So uh, we, can, we can do the optimization from the VDSO to guest kernel to container runtime, and we can do a lot of things. We, we, we treat that as a transformer, actually. It can change to a unikernel, and, and so we think the architecture is very flexible. But the disadvantage is very obvious. obvious. One is the performance. And the, the latter is the uh, um, compatibility. I will go by the compatibility firstly. Uh, everything trying to emulate Linux is not Linux. So actually, GVisor emulates about uh, 270 syscalls, uh, limit, uh, limited parameters. Um, and the Linux has totally 350 uh, syscalls there. 
So the compatibility issue is, cannot be totally solved by this, this, this direction. Another thing is like a, a micro, micro, micro virtual machine direction. Actually, first of all, we need to state that there are a broad spectrum of, a spectrum of implementations there from a different guest kernel, uh, a different guest kernel configuration, different uh, uh, devices, different uh, hypervisor. So there are uh, different configurations. So for micro virtual machine, they actually share, uh, has a very good uh, benefit that it, it is a late, late, uh, it's a native compatibility because in the guest kernel, it's still Linux. So um, another thing is a great e ecosystem. Uh, from the guest kernel, Linux, and uh, then the power virtualization device ecosystem, and uh, then the hypervisor, the, the, uh, the, there's a Rust of VMM. This project uh, are shared by different uh, micro virtual machine projects. And uh, the third thing is the expected overhead, usually. The, the expected overhead is like you, you can just change from the normal container to this micro virtual machine without a lot of uh, expectation. So, and, but the, the, it also has a disadvantage that it's actually hard to tune uh, for, some, for most of people because there are too many options, too many configurations, too many, and the, all the optimi uh, optimization will lead to the power virtualization device. So need to, need to uh, do the uh, guest and the host match to do that. Okay, so our, our work today is trying to get, uh, get this goal. Can we provide a better performance than normal container? That is wrong C. This is, how, this is what we do in these years. So we are going to uh, one by one. Firstly, Cisco interception is, is actually the cost. The structural cost of Cisco inter interception is really large. Even with the CPU virtualization, we push all the things into the guest, uh, guest uh, kernel. And uh, as you can see from the right, right side, uh, we, 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 we have a get PID benchmark. For native Cisco, you almost spend about 60 nanoseconds. And even with the KPT, KTPI, KPTI, you, you only need uh, 200, uh, about 200 nanoseconds. But for GVisor, the next three part, uh, P-Trace is really bad. And uh, recently upstream SysTrap, they need about one microsecond, in, even in the uh, good, uh, good situation. And the CPU, CPU virtualization, we, we use the KVM to accelerate that. The KVM platform, actually need 800 nanoseconds, so this is too much. So to minimize the cost as much as possible, we uh, do some change in the, architecture, in, in the architecture. Firstly, we're trying to avoid the CR3 register writes, which cost about 200 nanoseconds. And uh, secondly, we do the Cisco pre-routing to bypass the, host, the, the whole century. The, by the way, the century is the guest kernel of GVisor. So what, what can we get here? It's, uh, first one, we can get about uh, 600 nanoseconds. And if we do the pre-routing of the Cisco and to make the Cisco go into the uh, Cisco emulation code directly, it can get about 100 nanosecond. So the, the cost is slow. So a little bit more about the CR3 register write. Why do we need that? Firstly, in the, uh, in the, in the century, actually, century use the, uh, in the second, uh, second uh, third table, we can, share, we can see that both century and application, they have a conflict address space. 
in, uh, conflict, conflict address uh, in the address space. So both, uh, both are laid in the lower half of the uh, address space. So we, we need use different page table for, for them. And uh, but, uh, we, we try to merge that into one. So we split the lower half of the page table into two. So we put the uh, century in, in, the, in the upper half and the application in the lower half. So, so 64 bit address space is very big, so we can do this work. Um, even we use the virtualization to accelerate the Cisco interception, but it can slow down the sandbox Cisco. Which is sandbox Cisco? Sandbox Cisco is the Cisco need to, uh, the, the guest kernel calls into the host kernel. So that is slowed down. So on the right side, there's a number there. For CPU, CPU virtualization, like KVM platform, we need, to, we need about six microseconds to do that. Even this pass is, is not that frequent, but still too heavy for us. So we introduced a platform named Lalo Virtual Machine. It is based on the Doom and uh, it's much, much lighter than the KVM. Then the Cisco pass from the sandbox to host can be reduced uh, by, we don't need the red PL in the, in the original pass. So it, it can be accelerated at the uh, last one, about 400 nanosecond. 400 nanosecond. Okay. Previous, uh, Previous slides are show how do we reduce the cost uh, of the Cisco interception. It's still the cost. And then we need to do the uh, uh, Cisco emulation. How can we do that uh, in a much, ef much better, uh, efficient way? So here we need to, we need to implement the, the Cisco, uh, the, those hot paths in, in very efficient ways. Uh, the hot paths including the schedule, the networking, the logging. Uh, that is uh, uh, file I/O write. So basically, we treat the Sentry as a Cisco rotor. There are several paths in the Sentry. First one is the VDSO. The the whole paths are not uh, take the Sentry in the path. It's it's in the user space. And the second path is implemented in the Sentry. And the, the third and the fourth pass are very heavy. The third, third pass essentially need the help of the host kernel to do the, uh, to, to finish the, the work. And the fourth pass actually involve a IPC to, 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 to make, the, make, make it work. So to, to make it more efficient, firstly, we want to bypass the sentry, if possible, by Cisco pre-routing. As, as, uh, as previously noted. And the second, we rewrite some components with C and uh, Rust. So Go is not very efficient. Go is very efficient to coding, but it's not that efficient to uh, execution. And uh, third, we do the device pass through to bypass the host kernel. So why Sentry need the help of the host kernel to do that? Because there's low driver in the guest kernel in the century, so it, it must leverage the host kernel driver to send the packet outside of the machine. So we, we do the device pass through to, so that it, uh, cannot, uh, it, it does not necessary to, to involve the host kernel to finish your job. Then this pass can help us to eliminate the, the third pass. And uh, Last one, we want to uh, elimin eliminate the gopher, gopher. We will go into some detail here. So why do we need, need a gopher in the first place? Gopher is to proxy IO syscalls for security, but I, IPC is, too, is poor in, in performance side. And, uh, in mar and the cur current multi-process model is too heavy for function as a service. Uh, there, we, we will see 
say that in later slides to say why we think multi-process is bad. And uh, third, so in container, the root FS and band mounts are the most challenging obstacle to, to, to uh, avoid the gopher. So, um, sorry to add, add, up, add, add one thing. Gopher is to avoid the open syscall to directly call into the host kernel because uh, developers think to, uh, open is too dangerous. So how do we do that? We want to uh, want, want century contained file system I.O. for, for gopherness. Firstly, we introduce the EROFS for root, F, root FS to, for the uh, snap shorter. And uh, second, we use the raw file back, back to temp, temp FS as a upper layer, we, uh, upper layer. So this work is also uh, coded by the GVisor project this uh, first half year of, uh, this, of this year. And um, we think that's not enough. Actually, we need some asynchronous I.O. to make the direct re reclaim as less as possible. Third, the direct file system with predominant mount point file discretors to totally uh, remove the gopher process. So this is a new architecture uh, with previous statement. We still treat the century as a syscall routine. Firstly, you can see the pink path. We have the syscall pre-routine to bypass the whole century and go directly into the C implemented network and the storage part. And uh, this, this is called can send package directly to the virtual function into the uh, link, uh, in, in the smart link. So the whole pass does not uh, involve any century code or a host kernel code. And the, and the second one is the yellow one. The, the upper layer right will be uh, implemented with uh, tempfs, and uh, in the host kernel, there's a raw file to back up that. So this is very similar to the raw file in virtual machine scenario. And, and the third, the lower layer of the file are user space, uh, are, are EROFS, and uh, intercepted by the user space snapshot. And there are some other optimization there, like how do we make the I.O. for logging uh, better? Like we introduce some, some, something like buffer I.O. And uh, we, we also do some optimization in the go round time, like uh, the scheduling and the memory management. So here's some number uh, we picked from the, uh, our uh, evaluation. Uh, there are four for kind of workloads. Uh, as you can see, they, they are both, uh, they are both, they are all network intensive workloads, actually. So a little bit biased, uh, uh, biased uh, this, this one. But uh, indeed, we can provide a better, better perform throughput than the normal container. So uh, some, uh, if you familiar with the, uh, uh, some kernel bypass technology like DBK or, or, or RDMA, you, you can see there's are like 10 times uh, optimization, but this does not work like that way. It's only, only, uh, on, only this, this kind of optimization here. Okay, I, I will, uh, my colleague Tianyi will introduce what the security trade-off of this, this architecture change and the sound scenario, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tianyu. Um, please allow me to introduce the trade-offs we have made in GVisor and uh, the adoption of the GVisor in uh, the production environment of Ant Group. First, let's take a look at the trade-offs we have made in GVisor. 
uh, in this part, we mainly focus on the security concern in the um, guest kernel century and the host kernel Linux. First of all, uh, let's go through some basic ideas of how to ensure the security for a sandbox container. First, we should use the popular and stable code in the host Linux kernel rather than unpopular or newly merged code. More details please refer to the uh, locking pop paper in link 1. Second, we should maintain a second list for the container to restrict the container to only invoke the system calls um, that in the list. Third, we should minimize the uh, amount of host Linux kernel code that could be reached by the uh, sandbox during, during this life cycle. In order to make it less possible to trigger kernel bugs, Researchers uh, have shown that both Firecracker and Gvisor will reach more host kernel code than native Linux container, although with different frequency. As for our production, we need to modify the Gvisor to balance security while optimizing performance. We have to drop some security features uh, and introduce less secure feature to achieve significant um, performance improvement. Specifically, we have removed the kernel page table isolation KPTI, allowing the guest kernel sentry and the guest user application to share the page global directory PGD, thereby avoiding the overhead of writing to the register CR3 when switching between the guest user mode and guest kernel mode. At the same time, we introduced CGO uh, and Rust to accelerate the host pass hot paths in the gas kernel century, such as transferring the network packet. We further uh, reduced the second list to minimize the attack service from century to the host kernel. We use static analysis approach to identify all possible system calls that century may invoke and filter them down to a minimal set based on our own workload. Furthermore, we divide the sandbox lifecycle into two stages. Um, initialization and runtime. Uh, we will um, cut down this, uh, the, those system costs that only need in the initialization stage and uh, remove it after initialization has finished. We believe that Gvisor still remains a good level of security after these changes, which relies on uh, its multi-layer defense in-depth model. Next, I will introduce two important use cases of Gvisor in our production. The first one is the container runtime for long-lived containers. We have implemented mandatory access control, MAC, in Sentry, making it possible to audit the behavior of tasks inside the container and control them through user-defined rules. We still rely on the defend in-depth model of Gvisor to keep it difficult for attacker to escape from the container sandbox and compromise the host Linux kernel. As it shown in picture, we introduced level minus one as security for we are using device pass through in our network stack. In addition to this vertical defense, we also implemented horizontal defense measure, network access control. We introduced this both into the sentry and the network stack, making it possible to allow or drop network packet by ACL rules. As it shows, we began to use Gvisor as the core app's container runtime since December 2018. It costs 52% CPU util more than RunC, which is the basic Linux container without any gas kernel. After half a year, uh, in July 2019, the overhead of Gvisor has reduced to 10% 10, 10 compared to RONC, and after two years later, in November 2021, the CPU usage of Gvisor on core apps is less than RONC. So you can see, the modified Gvisor has speeded RONC in both security and performance in our production environment. The second use case is the runtime for short-lived fun function instance, which is the basic unit in function as a service. In order to reduce the code start time of a function instance, we modify the way of creating a container in Gvisor. We switched from the original 
uh, way of creating container in Gvisor, which is uh, the fork and exec. We changed it to the simple clone system call uh, from the seed sandbox. The seed sandbox is a uh, pre-created. It contains an uh, initialized gas kernel sentry, network stack, and uh, user space language runtime. We add a clone interface into the go runtime for Sentry to call after the C sandbox has finished its, its initialization. Inside the, this interface, the C sandbox will stop the world, uh, which is the uh, semantic in the go runtime, and reclaim all its thread. It finally becomes a single thread task and waiting to call clone system call. Uh, each function instance creation request will cause this seed sandbox to invoke clown system call, and the new thread will recover to the, to the uh, multi-thread task and start the world to run the guest user applications. As Linux copy on write is adopted in such clown operation, the new instance will cause less memory uh, as it shares most of its pages with the seed sandbox. Thanks to this method, the modified Gvisor outperforms existing industry-ready fast container runtime, such as upstream Gvisor, Firecracker, and RunD, both in code startup time and memory usage. We could create a ready-to-work function instance within 7 milliseconds and cost less than 1 megabytes. Now, please welcome my colleague Jian Feng to summarize this presentation. Okay. Thank you. So some takeaway from this presentation. Um, by architectural refactor, we actually think Gvisor can provide much better performance than RunC, but for some scenario. And Gvisor can be used at scale for both long and short-lived workloads. And um, last, micro virtual machine and sandbox are complementary to provide stronger isolation. So we, the, the mentioned work uh, above, we are trying to upstream to the Gvisor project. So thank you. <laughs> we, 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 we can take a question now. If you have. Yeah, please. Hello, uh, yeah, thank you for the presentation. Uh, those seven milliseconds that show up there uh, refer to the call, the start, or is it in warm up? Um, so, uh, by, by the means of a code start, it's actually like uh, the, the, it's ready to work, right? So, we think the, the, pro, the initialization are already finished after we, the start. It can uh, get uh, the, request immediately. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, hi, thanks for the presentation. So is there already a OCI compliant runtime which I can try it out with Containerd to run, launch the sandboxes or how does it work? Like did you modify run SC or is it like a sep separate runtime now? Like for Plugging it with container D. Uh, I, uh, did you catch that? So, like, Gvisor uses Run SC, right, to yeah. launch the sandboxes. So, can, and you have to configure container D with that. So, is it already possible with Nanovisor to make it work? Like, how would I use it right now? Is yeah, it yeah, we will already use that for for both scenario. Yeah, we will already use that. So, I don't. Get, so, did you modify Run SC, or is it like a separate runtime? Oh, it's still a wrong SC. Ah, okay. It's still wrong SC, yeah. Okay. We, we, we don't want to split the, the, this project. It's actually still Gvisor, yeah. So we are trying to upstream all of the work back to the Gvisor, yeah. Okay, so I think that's all. Thank you very much.